Back here, WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station. Now joining me is the former kicker for the Temple Owls between 1999 to 2002, and that's number 99, Cap Poclemba. Cap, Zach Gelp here at Temple Sports Hour. How are you? I'm doing well, Zach. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for coming on, and uh, I know you are a Baltimore Orioles fan. You live in Maryland. What was that feeling, Camden Yards? I know you were at game two. Uh, I was there. It was unbelievable. Absolutely incredible. It's, uh, it's been 15 years since we've had that feeling around here, so it was really pretty cool. Uh, hopefully we get to link something like that sometime here soon. Gonzalez corroded tonight, game three over in the Bronx in my home state of New York. I'm a Mets fan, not a Yankee fan, so I'm not going to kill you about rooting for the Orioles. But uh, preview this matchup tonight. Well, uh, you know, I tell you what, this, uh, this Oriole team is just a bunch of kids out there who just don't understand what it means to lose. So it's really a, it's a fun team to watch. doesn't matter if they're up 10 or down 10. Uh, the, the guys just go out and play. And, uh, you know, that's all you can ask for as a fan. It's just guys that want to play and keep going no matter what. So I tell you what, I, I wouldn't want to be a Yankees fan right now. Uh, this is a tough team to beat. It almost feels like a team of destiny in a way. And Buck Showalter has done a phenomenal job with this team so far this year, even ever since he's taken over. Uh, Buck Showalter is a manager of the year candidate. Uh, he has some competition in the AL, but you, do you expect the Orioles to win this series? You know, I really do. I don't know why. It's just you can't, you can't uh, write this team off. Uh, every time you think they're done and they're down, they turn around and do something, uh, do something incredible. You know, Buck is just one of those guys that he's so even keeled. You never know what he's thinking. You never know what he's going to do. Uh, but to be able to turn around a team like this, uh, I mean, really, it's almost a 40-game swing from what we had last year. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. We're talking to Cap Clemba and Cap, it was an imperative victory for the Temple Owls last Saturday, homecoming USF. I saw you in the uh, in the tailgate. I saw you, uh, you know, having some fun in the parking lot. Uh, it was an emotional win. As an alumni, what did this win mean to you? You know, as, as an alum and, and a former player, uh, this is possibly one of the biggest games I think we've win, uh, we've won since uh, since I've been around the program. Uh, it was you can say must win all you want, but you know this is kind of a it was a winnable game. Uh, but I don't think many people outside of the uh, the true Temple fans thought it was a winnable game. And I think the team really finally came together, put some stuff together. And you know when it came down to the the end of the game there, and you know it seemed like everything was falling apart. For whatever reason, it just it felt like we were going to pull it out. You know, uh, even you come down for a field goal like that, you just had this feeling he's going to miss it or block it, you know, something along those lines. So a huge win for the program, uh, especially being the first Big East win. I think it kind of gave him a little confidence. He saw some, some young kids really become players and start to learn how to win, uh, which I think is important. As the clock went down to zero when it went from 3 two, one, zero, did you have any emotions go through your body of uh, the days where the Owls left the Big East when they basically got kicked out? Did any of those flashbacks come back to mind? You know, I was fortunate enough to not be there when it all happened. Uh, I was on my way out. I, I always played in the Big East, but it was kind of a, it was a bitter feeling to see that happen. And, uh, you know, especially for guys that put a lot of work in, I, I feel horrible for the guys that were there, came in, recruited to play in the Big East, and never really got that opportunity or got, uh, you know, a shortened opportunity. So it was, it was uh, one of those wins that felt good as a, as a Temple player. To, to win that Big East game. You know, not that you want to kind of give it back and say, yeah, you know, we're back, here we are. Uh, but it just felt good to get that Big East win. It made it that much sweeter. As a player, how do you settle down those emotions from that previous game? It was obviously a big-time win, but now you have a UConn team, and you're going into Connecticut, and that's not going to be an easy game. Well, you know, Coach Adazio, has got a, he's got a, a tough job on his hands to do that, but, you know, th- he's a motivator. You know, that's, there's nothing like playing for a coach to get you motivated to go. Uh, you know, occasionally, obviously, I don't think we came out too well against Maryland, but, uh, you know, we, he's one of those guys, the guys are always ready to play. And I think now he's got them believing in themselves and they see they can win and they got that feeling of winning. You know, he, he can motivate those guys to really come out and be ready to go. Uh, no question, it's a good UConn team we got coming up here, but, you know, they're, they're, they got a lot of weaknesses too. Uh, their offense is really struggling. They got a, an unproven quarterback. And I think if we can do something against a really tough defense, uh, we got a good shot at this game. And the Owls, they were ranked to finish eighth in the Big East heading into the season. As a player, how do you use those outside uh, people, the media and everything, saying, oh, the Owls aren't going to be so good as uh, motivation? Yeah, you know, I think some uh, some fans kind of take it a little bit harder than the, than the team does. You know, when you're a player, you know what you got. You know, you know, you know the players you have, the talent you have. Uh, and, and when it comes down to it, Unfortunately, I don't think the media most of the time really have any idea, uh, you know, what these teams have. I mean, you look at what they – you had a lot of uh, media people calling Pittsburgh the best team in the Big East or one of the top teams in the Big East, and you see where, you know, where that's shaking out so far this year. I just think, you know, 
I don't think the players take it too much into account, and it's not on their minds too much. Of course, it's a little bit of a, of a motivating factor, but not nearly as much as, as a lot of people put into it, I don't think. Well, this is Big East football, and this is the difference from the MAC. You know, you go from playing a USF team, you're going to Connecticut, and then you have Rutgers next week. Uh, this Big East is very tough for the Owls, and I know it's not even what the Big East once used to be. Yeah, you know, it's exciting, though. It's exciting it to is. see these teams back in the, you know, us back in playing the teams that we're, we should be playing. Uh, nothing, nothing against the MAC teams, and you know, you gotta, you gotta thank the MAC conference. Uh, you know, so you're blue in the face here because they really, they saved our program. No question about it. Um, you know, by giving us that opportunity, so we're we're forever in debt to them in that in that regard. But it's great to see teams like Rutgers, teams like USF, teams like you know, well Pittsburgh this year. Uh, you know, those high level teams that we should be playing as a as an Eastern uh, you know football school. It's great to see them back, and it's good for the fans too because you know they you know hopefully they continue to come out. Hopefully, uh, you know we get some nice crowds out there because that's what they deserve. Zach Gelpier, WHIP, Philly's number one college radio station, talking to former Owls kicker Cap Plaklemba. And Cap, uh, let's get to the kicking game now. Brendan McManus has been so resilient through the course of this season, and he's going to the NFL one day. He's so uh, dynamic, uh, kicking and punting this year for this team. And even in that last game up against USF, he missed an extra point, which he didn't do in 59 straight attempts, and he missed a field goal. But then that big 50-yard field goal before the half really started to change the momentum in this game. Just talk a little bit about McManus. Yeah, you know, as a kicker, you got to have a, a really short memory. Uh, it's almost like being a, a you know a save guy in, in baseball. You got to have a short memory. You can't you can't dwell on that stuff. Uh, you know, and I was curious to see how Brandon came back from that because that's really, from what I remember, the first time in his career where he's you know struggled a little bit like that, more than missing a kick here or there. Uh, but you know, it can be a tough thing missing an extra point. I remember doing the same thing at Virginia Tech, and you know when that happens after going that long without missing, you know it's a, it's a good shot at the shot to your psyche a little bit. So uh, it was great to see him bounce back like that, you know. And I think Brandon, he's a great kicker, but where he's really just propelled our owls is, is with the punting game. Uh, I mean, he in so many games has changed the field position, uh, and I personally think that's where he's going to make a huge impact at the, at the next level. So he's been a huge impact for us, and you know, they can't. You really can't uh, forget about that punting game and how much he's done for it. It's a young season, and the Owls are only four games in, but right now, McManus, and I know it's crazy for to say this about a kicker, he's the MVP of this football team, Cap. I think you're probably right. You know, uh, you can make an argument for a couple other players out there, but in terms of what he's done, you know, like I said, especially I really look at the punting game, uh, just keeping us in games, changing that field position. It's huge because uh, we really haven't been able to, until this last game here, and, and obviously against Villanova, we haven't gotten that running game going. You know, our receivers were struggling a little bit uh, catching the football. So, you know, when you're, when you're not playing very well offensively or not playing great offensively, you know, that, that punting game and the kickoffs and coverage like that is, is a huge piece of the game. People forget about, you know, special teams. Uh, Coach Rapone used to tell us special teams is for special people, and they make a huge impact on games. So it's great to see him and, you know, and, and the coverage team doing so well. Give me one word to describe McManus and why. Uh, I think resilient. You know, he's... Um, you, you just feel like any time he goes to, to hit the ball, he's going to make it. Um, you know, that's just one of those things, and, and it's good to have a kicker like that as a fan and especially as a, a former kicker. You know what, what kind of pressure you got out there uh, in big games, and he's fortunate to have had you know, a lot of big kicks and big games, and uh, you know, he's, he's just resilient. He keeps coming back, and you know, this past week was a great example of that, um, coming out and missing those two short ones, and hey, you, gotta, you just got to forget about it and, and do your job, and, and he did. Cap, let's get to the quarterback position. Chris Coyer has been inconsistent throughout the course of this season. He had some rough games up against Penn State. The first half in Maryland was rough. Uh, he had a pretty darn good game up against Villanova. But last week he was 16 for 20. He was real calm in that pocket. Can you see him repeat success this week up against UConn? Yeah, you know, I think the big thing is you got to get that running game going. Uh, and I think uh, Coach Dazio did a great job. You know, I'm, I'm a kicker. I'm not a football mind. But, um, you know, I think having that big run early – running that kind of that option, uh, I think that gets Chris going. He, he's at his best once he gets in the flow of the game. If he can't get in the flow of the game, it's going to be tough. You know? And also, with that said, I, I think his, uh, his receiver stepped up big time. We had some big catches this past week. And, you know, again, coming back to the flow of the game, when you're making plays, he's making plays with his feet. You know, we get a, a good you know, third and long, and he puts the ball in a guy's numbers, and we just drop it. That's, you know, that kills that momentum. It kills his confidence a little bit, too. So, you know, I think I love Chris Corey as a quarterback. He's a he does he's he, tough. He's a tough kid, and that's all you can ask for. You say here's a brick wall, run through it, and that's when he runs into it until 
until he's through. So that's all you can ask for as a quarterback. And, uh, you know, I think he's a huge asset. Can't wait to see him play again this week. I think he's going to have a lot of success if we can get the ball running. It was also nice to see Cody Booth get into the end zone because, as we all know, him and Corey had that miscommunication play in that Penn State game. Yeah, definitely. No question. You know, and, and a lot of these guys are stepping up. And I think the, you know, the receivers especially, they, they realize that, you know, they haven't been playing up to, up to snuff and up to their expectations. And I think a lot of those guys took that to heart a little bit, uh, you know, and unfortunately came out and had a big game. Cap, before we let you go, I know you're a crazy fan, and I remember my first time uh, going to one of these Owls football games before I sat up there in the press box. You came into the student section and you screamed, I'm an old hag, but I'm going to get these fans up and going because that's what we do. I know you get out there very early to the game, 7 a.m., but where's my invite to one of your tailgates? Hey, man, you are always welcome. I always got some great food out there. You know, you got to get there early, and and they change us up with our spots this year, but you can always find uh, my two flags up and just look for the – the old wig and hat from the basketball days up on top of that flagpole. Come on by for some food anytime. Cap, thanks so much. Actually, right before we let you go, what's at the Cap Pook Lemba tailgate? What kind of food? Uh, it just depends. We had the Cappy's Chicken Chicken Chili this past week. That's always a, a fan favorite. We, we do some jalapeno poppers, some, uh, some flank steaks. Uh, we always got good stuff over there. Sounds great, Cap. Thanks so much for the time. I appreciate it. You guys, Zach, take care. Go Owls.